This is Malik Pahook from the University of Colorado, and I'll be speaking today about goniosynechiolysis, also known as GSL. GSL was first described in conjunction with cataract surgery in 1984. It is a physical separation of the peripheral anterior synechia, or PAS, from the trabecular meshwork using various devices like a spatula or a microforceps. And this is typically done under direct visualization with a gonio lens. Who's a candidate for GSL? Phagic patients with primary angle closure glaucoma would be a candidate combined with cataract surgery. Chronic angle closure glaucoma with elevated intraocular pressure and at least 50% of the angle sealed with PAS would be a good candidate for combined cataract surgery with GSL. Many of our colleagues have advocated concentrating GSL on patients who have fresh PAS, and that would be PAS that is formed within 6 to 12 months. Unfortunately, it's not always clear as to when the PAS were formed. Standalone GSL may have IOP benefits in chronic angle closure glaucoma, but this is controversial and likely dependent on timing. And I'll go over some techniques that might make this more feasible and more effective in, in specific patient populations. Who is not a candidate for GSL? Eyes with very advanced cupping and central visual field defects where IOP spikes are more worrisome postoperatively. In this case, you wouldn't just want to do GSL. Caution in patients on anticoagulant or antiplatelet therapy because they're going to have a higher tendency for hyphema formation. Patients who have active uveitis or chronic recurrent uveitis are not good candidates, but GSL can be effective if the uveitis has been quiet for a long period of time without recurrences. There are various methods that can be used for GSL. Viscoelastic on a cannula can be used to separate the PAS with a mechanical force of the viscoelastic. A spatula, like a Coke spatula. Forceps under both direct and indirect view. An agonial lens is key in this case, but you can also use endoscopy. And I'll try and go over a couple of these cases so that I can illustrate the different techniques. Some keys to a successful treatment. Ensure that you, the surgeon, are comfortable. This shouldn't be your first angle case. You should be very familiar with the techniques and all of the equipment and devices that are used. Ensure that the patient is comfortable. And I usually discuss the positioning that will occur during the surgery with both the patient's head as well as the tilt of the microscope. Be an angle expert in both the clinic and the operating room. And it's really important to do dry runs of any angle procedure before you do cases. You just want to be familiar with everything happening in the operating room, including the gonial lens that's used, and to make sure that the nurses in the operating room are very familiar with any of the positioning needs that you might have during the procedure. Ensure a stable anterior chamber. This is key, and I tend to use a cohesive viscoelastic like Helon GV. And make sure that you push and pull down rather than centrally. This is an extremely important point that will be the theme during the videos that you see to follow. We don't want any central tugging of the iris. We want the peripheral iris to be pulled down away from the trabecular meshwork. This is a case where I'm showing a technique with a Coke spatula. And you can see after deepening the angle with a cohesive viscoelastic, the spatula goes into the nasal angle through the clear corneal incision and the iris, the periphery of the iris, is padded down away from the trabecular meshwork. This is a common technique that is used by many surgeons and can be quite effective at separating the PAS. Here's an example of how not to do GSL with forceps. And you can see here, what we're doing is not a complete grab of the periphery uh, of the iris and releasing the iris prior to separation of the PAS. In this case, it just shows the importance of committing to the tissue once you grab it and to pull down away from the trabecular meshwork. And let me show exactly how to do that here in the next video. This is an example of how to do things with a duet forcep. And you can see here we're committing to grabbing the periphery of the iris and we're pulling down away from the trabecular meshwork. And you see the clear separation of some of the attachments to the trabecular meshwork. This can be a really satisfying treatment when you see this intraoperatively, this great separation away from the trabecular meshwork. And again, you see that we're committing to grabbing the tissue and pulling down gently. You can also perform the procedure with, a, uh, with an indirect view in this case. All of the prior videos that I was showing were direct views. In this case, Arsham Shabani from WashU is performing an indirect view with MST forceps taking down the PAS. And you can see where the arrow is indicating exactly where the PAS was and how it's pulled down. 
This is a little bit more of a difficult technique uh, because we're not operating with a direct view that we're used to. But it does have advantages where you don't have to reposition the patient or the microscope. You can keep the microscope upright in the typical fashion that you would for uh, cataract surgery, for example. Other techniques include using a blade that we designed here at the University of Colorado called the Cook Dual Blade. In this case, what you see when the KDB is introduced into the anterior chamber, the tip hooks around the PAS and the PAS is pulled down away from the trabecular meshwork. This is a really nice way to take PAS down and you can also do it with the heel of the device where you're patting down the periphery of the iris to pull the PAS away from the trabecular meshwork. And this also allows us to perform an excisional goniotomy in these patients with chronic angle closure glaucoma. We found that these patients are ideal for an excisional goniotomy. It allows us to get a significant amount of IOP lowering as well as getting them off some of their medications. You can see here as the blade pulls away from the canal, the strip of trabecular meshwork is wrapped around the ramp of the KDB and can then be pulled out of the anterior chamber. We do have publications now in uh, the public domain that can be viewed by uh, any surgeon who's performing this type of procedure. This is a publication by Cyril Dariraj showing a significant amount of IOP lowering from 25 to 13 and a decrease in medications from around 2 to 0.14. So a significant reduction in the two metrics that we chiefly care about in, in a procedure like this, a reduction in IOP and a significant reduction in the medications. This is exciting to see and it's, it's something that we've witnessed in the operating room and in clinic with these patients, but it's nice to have data to support that. There are, of course, potential complications for any procedure that we do in the operating room. With GSL specifically, there is a potential for hyphema formation. This typically happens during the IA, irrigation aspiration period. Postoperatively, uh, we can see both a microhyphema as well as a layered hyphema. And this can be reduced by meticulous hydration or suturing of the wound if need be to ensure the anterior chamber is properly inflated. Chronic inflammation can be seen, and this is minimized by tugging as little as possible on the iris. And you can always increase steroids postoperatively to control the inflammation. Iridodialysis and cyclodialysis, plus or minus hypotony, are possible but are rare complications. And they usually result from central pulling of the iris rather than a downward push, as I've described. In summary, GSL is an important skill to master. Standalone GSL can be effective in advanced chronic angle closure glaucoma. Cataract surgery with GSL is an excellent option for eyes post acute angle closure glaucoma, especially when done within six months of the attack. This isn't something that we shared data on during this talk, but you'll see some references in the slide to follow. Cataract extraction plus GSL is an option for longer standing chronic angle closure glaucoma and can be combined with TM excision, as I showed in the previous video. And remember to perform with a soft touch, push and pull down rather than centrally. Some references that you can look up if you want some further reading. Thank you very much.